Buddha is saying that if, while traveling, you don't meet anyone better or at least equal to you, it's better to go on your journey alone. He emphasizes that keeping company with fools is not a good idea. Even though this might seem obvious, it's actually tough to follow, because people often don't consider what makes a good friend. Understanding what makes a good friend helps us identify bad friendships, saving us from wasting time and energy. So let's start with the basics. What makes a good friend? Good friends. Similar to Buddha's wisdom, I believe a good friend provides companionship, fostering a relationship built on mutual learning and consequently mutual growth and freedom. In the arithmetic of friendship, the equation is such that one plus one were three, indicating that both individuals gain more within the relationship than they would independently. This connection enables them to deepen their understanding of themselves, each other, and the world, promoting learning, expansion, and a greater freedom from suffering. In my perspective, this essence encapsulates the true meaning of companionship. A good friend is like a beacon of warmth and understanding in life's journey. They are the ones who stand by you through thick and thin, offering unwavering support and genuine companionship. What sets a good friend apart is their ability to take a sincere interest in your thoughts, feelings, and experiences. They willingly step into your shoes, embracing your perspective with an open heart, in the realm of mutual learning, a good friend is a trusted ally. They appreciate the uniqueness you bring to the table and actively seek to understand your worldview. Rather than merely seeking validation, a good friend challenges you to grow by providing constructive insights and perspectives. They celebrate your successes and offer a comforting presence during challenging times. Crucially, a good friend is not driven by self-absorption or a desire for superiority. Instead, they prioritize the well-being of the relationship and the shared growth of both individuals. Trust and honesty form the foundation of their interactions, creating a safe space for open communication and vulnerability. In essence, a good friend is a source of joy, understanding, and growth. They contribute positively to your life, creating a bond that withstands the test of time. What is a fool? If a good friend provides companionship, a bad friend falls short in this aspect. But why is that the case? According to Buddha, a bad friend is essentially a fool. And what defines a fool? In essence, a fool is someone who is excessively self-absorbed, consumed by their own thoughts, their self-centered nature leads them to overvalue their own knowledge and perspective while undervaluing the insights of others. The fool tends to overestimate what they know and underestimate what they don't. Because of their self-absorption, fools lack attentiveness to others, hindering their ability to learn from different perspectives. Their attachment to their own point of view prevents them from stepping into someone else's shoes or understanding an alternative outlook. Expressing a viewpoint contrary to theirs may provoke anger or dismissal as they resist understanding perspectives divergent from their own. Due to this reluctance to comprehend others, fools become incapable of both teaching and learning from those around them. This lack of mutual exchange impedes the growth of understanding for both parties involved. Without the potential for mutual growth, companionship becomes unattainable. This elucidates why Buddha advises that it is better to journey alone than seek companionship from a bad friend. Going solo retains the possibility of self-enrichment, the discovery of genuine friendships, and avoids wasting time, energy, and attention on an ultimately futile endeavor. The fool friend tends to overvalue their own knowledge and dismiss the insights of others. Their self-centered nature prevents them from stepping into your shoes and comprehending your point of view. When faced with conflicting opinions, they are prone to anger or dismissal rather than seeking understanding or resolution. Ultimately, a fool friend lacks the capacity to teach or learn meaningfully within the relationship. Without a genuine interest in exploring your knowledge or understanding your perspective, the companionship becomes one-sided and unfruitful. 
As Buddha wisely suggested, it is better to go alone than seek companionship with such a misguided friend, preserving the potential for self-enrichment and genuine connections. Signs of a Fool The indicators that a friendship may not thrive are clear. If someone lacks a genuine interest in understanding your worldview, especially when it differs from theirs, the friendship is likely to falter. Without an authentic interest in comprehending you, they cannot learn from your knowledge or teach you anything meaningful. As Buddha advised, it's better to go alone than seek companionship in a false friend, as the relationship won't be mutually beneficial. Reflecting on our own friendships, it's essential to consider how good of a friend we are. Do we naturally engage with the worldviews of those around us? Do we make an effort to understand their perspective and explore their knowledge? If not, why? Each person carries a unique viewpoint, experiences, knowledge, emotions, and ideas. Through mutual exploration, both parties can broaden their perspectives. However, if we lack interest in others' thoughts, especially those challenging our own, we must question our true interests. Conclusion Do our interests in friendships revolve around seeking validation, flattery, and obedience? Are we merely pursuing feelings of comfort, superiority, and power? It's a thought-provoking reflection. If genuine awareness and a lack of self-absorption are crucial for authentic friendships, what hinders our ability to be truly aware? I delved into this topic in another video titled Buddha, be aware, become free, which seamlessly extends and builds upon the ideas presented here. You can find the link in the description below for a more in-depth exploration of this theme. If you like this video, please subscribe and follow my YouTube channel. Thank you.